Black people in Britain are the least likely out of all ethnic groups to be married. And in my opinion, this is one of the, if not the most important causal factor behind our lack of wealth and prosperity and progress as a people in this country. So digging into the data, this is a table based on the 2021 census. You'll see here that this shows you the proportion of the population who are married by in each ethnic group. And you'll see there a very, very clear picture. You see the Asian group. So you've got Pakistanis, 62% of those, 63% of those are married. 62% of Indians, 61% of Bangladeshis or Bengalis, other Asians 58%, Chinese 54%. Over on the far right hand side, you've got the Arabs at 56%. Then you've got a significant drop down to the white populations who hover around about the 40 to 45% there. White British people there, 44% of them are, are married. Then you go down to black ethnic groups. Now, black Africans are are the most likely out of all black people in the UK to be married. 40% of black African people here in the UK are married. Then there's a big old drop down there to other black and black Caribbeans there around about 26%. What that means is that only one in four black other people who are classified as other black or black Caribbean are married. What I find interesting is that if you look at the mixed ethnicities, you see the same pattern. So the most likely out of the mixed people who are mixed to be married are the white and Asian at 41%. Still a lot lower than their full Asian counterparts, if you want to use that kind of language, but still higher than most black groups. And then look at this here. You've got white and black African. There are 34% of those are married. And then white and black Caribbean, 28% of those are married. So it's a, it's a, it's a similar kind of gap between the white and black Africans and the white and black Caribbeans. The black African slash white people are more likely to be married than the white slash black Caribbean people are. So there's a very, very big difference between the marriage rates in the black community versus the marriage rates in every single other community, particularly when you're looking at black Caribbeans and other black. So onto the question of this video, what difference does it make? Does it actually matter that people are not getting married, that black people are not getting married anywhere near as frequently as other people are getting married? Well, in my opinion, it really does. First of all, it's really important to understand what marriage is. Marriage is one of the most important foundations of family and of community and of society. In a marriage, you have two people, first of all, who have come together. They've come together to make a commitment to each other and to their offspring, if they're going to have children, that they're going to really work on this. They're signaling to themselves and to everybody else and they're connecting themselves institutionally, if you like, from that moment onwards. It's, it's a, marriage is a unique form of commitment between two individuals, first and foremost. When two people get married, you have a pooling of assets. The husband brings their assets, the wife brings their assets, brings not, and when I say assets, by the way, I'm not just talking about money. I'm not just talking about material assets. I'm not just talking about products and items. I'm talking about the, all of the assets, the cultural assets, the intellectual assets, the knowledge assets, emotional assets, all, basically these two people are bringing everything that they have together. You can achieve a lot more. The, the, what's the saying? Together, everyone achieves more. In a team, everyone achieves more. One, as I mentioned in my video about wealth, black wealth and the black middle class, you can have as many individual rich people as you want, but if they're not collaborating, it doesn't matter. And this is what marriage is for. Marriage is the number one means by which people come together, pull what they have, pull their resources, pull their assets, their knowledge, expertise for a greater impact in life than they would have on it if they were individual, just, just one, one on their own. Importantly, marriage is a commitment, is a connection between two families. And families are the foundation of any society. So when people get married, it sh this is how it should be anyway, it should be the case that the family of one partner in the marriage and the family of the other partner in the marriage, they're also uniting. And that's how you strengthen ties between families. We can talk about how you look at the royals and this, that and the other. All their marriages are very strategic. They don't just marry someone because of love and romance. They marry because they want to unite two houses, two clans, make peace between two warring houses, for example. And on a more mundane level, it is about families joining together because as families join together, as families unite with one another, 
and it's of course manifested in the children of the, the you know that that are born then again i was talked about the pooling of the resources the pooling of the family resources takes place as well and they're able to work together unite one another unite together and that's the foundation for a community that's the foundation for a healthy society and of course marriages create a safe space for children to be nurtured in. Let's look at some of the life outcomes for children based on whether or not their parents were married or not married or cohabiting. You might be surprised by some of these figures. So these are figures from the Millennium Cohort Study. This is a large scale study in the UK where they're following thousands of people over several years. That's what a co cohort study is, is when you follow a group of people throughout their life or, or for over many decades to see what kinds of things happen in their lives. And this research paper looks at whether or not children whose parents were married, cohabiting or, or never married, had higher or lower levels of mental health problems. So among those children whose parents had stayed together, those parents who had been married, around about one in five, so 20% of children had a high level of mental health problems, any mental health problems. Amongst those parents who stayed together but were cohabiting, that goes up to between 25% and 30%. Even where parents had stayed together, if they were cohabiting, the children were more likely to have a high level of mental health problems than if the parents had been married. And then you look at those children who had split up. What's really interesting for me here is that even amongst those, par those parents who had split up, the children whose parents had been married before they split up, yes, it's, a high, it's higher than if the parents had stayed together. Uh, about one in three of those had a high level of mental health problems, but that's only slightly higher than even those children whose parents had stayed together but were only cohabiting. And then you look at the, of course, as you'd expect, amongst those children whose parents had split up and whose parents had only been cohabiting when they were together, it goes right the way up to nearly 40% of children having a high level of mental health problems. So these data make it really clear that marriage is very good for children. As I said at the top, in my opinion, this is one of the most important factors behind our problems as black people here in this country. Now, the next question, of course, to follow up is why? Why are black people so less likely to get married than other ethnic groups? Let me know your thoughts in the, in the comments about that particular question. And I'll, I'll gather the, some of those comments together and do some research for a future video looking into that, why black people in Britain don't marry. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. If you, if you want to see more of these kinds of conversations, do like the video. And also check out these other videos as well. There's one here YouTube's going to recommend, which you might find useful. Then there's another one here as well, which follows on from this particular topic of this particular video. All right, take good care and I'll speak to you soon.